Ireland's long history is riddled with folklore, ancient mythology, and ancient societies, which include the Druids, who were highly regarded among the Celts. They were considered teachers, wise priests, and even as magicians. Many stories and myths indicate that the Druids frequented oak forests a lot. Subsequently, the Celtic meaning of the word Druid is knowing or finding the oak tree. Stories of fairies playing pranks on farmers and leprechauns hiding their gold at the end of a rainbow are other examples of legends preserved in Celtic society. The Celts believed the year was divided into two parts, the lighter half in the summer and the darker half in the winter. Samhain or Halloween was the division between these halves. The Celts believed that the veil between our world and the other world was thinnest at this time. The day after October 31st, which is Halloween, is the Day of the Dead on November 1st, or All Saints Day, when those who have passed away are remembered, and some Celts would wear costumes to confuse the spirits potentially roaming our world during the time of transition. They did not leave behind a written record so knowledge of the Druids comes from classical writers of their time, such as the Greeks and Romans, and they were compared to the Aryan Brahmins of India, the Pythagoreans of Greece, and the Chaldean astronomers of Babylon. Julius Caesar wrote that they, and I quote, know much about the stars and celestial motions and about the size of the earth and universe, and about the essential nature of things, and about the powers and authority of the immortal gods, and these things they teach to their pupils." End quote. That said, there is surprisingly very little that is known about the ancient origins of the Druids, at least as far as academia is concerned. Turning to legend, let us start with one concerning how Scotland got its name. Scotta, in Irish mythology, is the name given, in this version of the tale, to the daughter of an Egyptian pharaoh around the time of the Exodus, who married someone named Goidel Glass and became the founder of the Scots and Gaels after being exiled from Egypt. Now, Goidel Glass was the grandson of a Scythian prince, one of 72 chieftains who allegedly built the Tower of Babel. Are you still with me? Good. Goidel Glass is credited with the creation of Gaelic, which is the Proto-Irish language, and it's from one of the original 72 languages that allegedly arose from the time of the confusion of tongues, the part in the Bible where God gets upset and destroys the tower and disperses the people, confusing their languages. I admit these are fantastic stories, but they seem to have been taken quite seriously by European royalty. The size of this stone is about 26 inches by 17 inches by 11 inches and its weight is approximately 336 pounds. The top bears chisel marks and there are rings at each end for easier transport. In appearance, insignificant, but to kings and queens, an irreplaceable artifact. It is called the Stone of Destiny, and it has been revered for centuries as a holy relic and fought over by the Scottish and English for some 700 years. The stone has been used successively 
by British and other monarchs as a very important part of their enthronement ceremonies. Legend has it that it was transported to Ireland via Spain by Princess Scotta, the eldest daughter of Akhenaten and Nefertiti, also known as Princess Meritaten, who fled Egypt following the overthrow of her father. For those interested to go deeper down this rabbit hole, you can check out a book written in 1939 by none other than Sigmund Freud called Moses and Monotheism. The grave of Princess Scotta allegedly lies in an Irish valley known as Glen Scoithin or Vale of the Little Flower, indicated by a road signpost and the trail from the road leads along a stream to a clearing where a circle of large stones marks the gravesite. As for Egyptian graves, there are a striking number of red-headed royal mummies belonging to the Hyksos pharaohs, a word which meant foreign rulers to the ancient Egyptians. There is no doubt that the Hyksos were foreign to the African continent as they introduced the horse and chariot to Egypt and there are no horses at all in the sub-Saharan African fossil record. They also introduced some advanced metal and there are now interesting discoveries being made regarding genetics. Well there's our research that we're hearing today that shows half of all Western European men are somehow related to the Egyptian pharaoh King Tutankhamun. Not only do half of Western European men have this connection, genetic profile connection, but 70% of men in Britain, which is astounding, but yeah. they all have the same uh, genetic profile or same ancestry as King Tut from Egypt way back when. And here's what's really shocking about this. Less than 1% of modern day Egyptians have that same connection. So you kind of make, it kind of makes you wonder, well, if he's Egyptian, mm -hmm. but the ancestry isn't Egyptian, how did it evolve? Which way did it move? And it looks like it didn't start in Egypt, but it evolved and went to Egypt and may have started in Europe. And that's why all the Europeans have this background. Isn't that interesting? Red hair is the rarest natural hair color in humans, it was thought to be the sign of a witch during the Middle Ages and the distribution of red hair in the world population is about 1%. But in Scotland and Ireland, it's about 10 to 13% of the population that has red hair, with 30 to 45% unknowingly carriers of the red hair gene. This region is also particularly high in rhesus negative blood type sharing this trait with the Basque, Berbers, and others in an interesting and important topic which I will continue on in a future presentation. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an author and anthropologist and would like to invite you to join me in awakening from a long amnesia. Species with amnesia, our forgotten history, Gods with amnesia, subterranean worlds of inner earth, the occult secrets of Vril, and 1666, redemption through sin. I would like to thank my subscribers who share my posts as I rely on word of mouth, and I appreciate all of the positive feedback, reviews on my books, and requests for longer videos. I promise I will try, and I thank you very much for listening.